Alrighty then my game dev elves, now that we have our level we don't have one of the main ingredients and that is the camera is not following the player. I'm not going to turn on or run the game and see that because we already know what that is. So I'm going to go over here inside of the scripts folder and I'm going to right click and create a new folder that I am going to call gameplay scripts and this is where we're going to store the scripts related to the gameplay such as the camera following the player. So right click and create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call it camera follow and of course we are going to attach it on the main camera. Now, of course, there are multiple ways how you can solve this. One of the ways is that we can simply make the camera child of the player. So I can drag the camera as a child of the player. If I hit the play button now, wherever the player goes, the camera goes. But we don't want it like this because look at that. You see this over here? We don't want this gap to be seen. We don't want the camera to follow the player in this term. Like, you know, when we jump and so on and so forth, we want the camera to stay static in terms of its Y position, but we only want the camera to follow the player on the X position. So that's why over here inside of the camera follow, and of course that is one of the solutions, depending on the game that you are creating, this can be the ideal solution for you. For example, the top-down games, you're most likely to use this approach. I don't see why you should create a script in a top-down game to follow you know, your main character. Anyways, moving forward over here, we're going to create a private transform and this one is going to be the target or the player who we are going to follow. And below we are going to create a serialized field, which is going to be a private float offset X. And that is going to be equal to minus five for the initial value. Of course, if we don't like it, we can change it because I set it to be a serialized field. It is visible in the inspector and all of the good stuff. Now, over here, we're also going to have a private vector 3, and this is going to be our temporary position. I, al I already explained why am I using temporary position. I don't want to create new vector 3 objects over and over and over again inside of the update function. Now, in the awake, we're going to get a reference to the target by using our game object, and over here, it's game object with capital G dot find with the tag. So it's find with tag and here we can pass the player tag and we can say dot transform. But why should we do it like this? Because we have the tag manager that we can use for that purpose. And over here, let me just move this, go in here. It's public static string and this is going to be our player tag. And of course over here, simply type player because all of the tags, the idea behind this is that all tags are in one single place. So that over here, we can simply say tag manager dot player tag. And it's the exact same thing, the exact same effect. Now, before we continue, let us just make sure, go over here and tag the player with the player tag. If we don't do that, this will not work. By default, I believe starting from Unity, whatever version 2017, here you have the player tag as the default one created already. I don't know why don't I have the enemy tag because you know, you, you have the enemies in the game, most likely. But, you know, it's not a rule. Anyways, moving forward, inside of a function that I'm going to call void follow player is where the magic is going to happen. And the first thing that I'm going to check is if we don't have the target, then we are going to return. Now, again, return statement in a void function will simply exit outside of the function, meaning if we hit return, all the code that's below the return statement, we can have a gazillion lines of code. We can have this and this and this and this and this. Nothing will be executed if the return statement is hit. Did you know that I have a game development academy with over 80 courses and over 500 hours of content where you can learn more about Unity game development, Unreal Engine game development with more in-depth tutorials and a more comprehensive guide than this one that you're following? No? Well, click the link down below and check it out for a small monthly fee. You can access all of that unlimited, watch at your own pace and learn game development. Click the link down below and check it out. Now, what is this exclamation mark and then target? Well, basically I'm testing if we don't have a target. So this is the same thing as if I test if the target is equal to null, meaning we don't have a reference to the player. That can happen for two reasons. The first reason, the tag over here is not valid and we did not get a reference to the player for starters. And it can happen if the player is dead. So when the player dies, we're going to use destroy and destroy the player. So if that happens, then we will not have the target. And if we don't use this line of code over here, then we're going to have a null reference exception. Simple. So over here, I'm simply going to say temporary position is equal to the transform position of the camera. And our temporary position X is going to be equal to target dot position dot X. And we're going to 
to subtract from it the offset x. And last but not least, our transform position is going to be equal to temp position. And there you go. Now, of course, the majority of people are going to use update and put the follow player here in the update. But my advice for you and for anyone watching this is that you should use the late update. So what is late update? Well, first things first, we have the update and we have the fixed update, not fixed join, but fixed update. And we have the late update. Let me explain the difference between all of these. Update is called every frame. So every frame, so here, frame there you go you get the point i don't have to type it so every frame update is called fixed update however is called on a fixed time interval that time interval is over here so you can go back inside of the editor and you can go under edit and you can go under project settings and then for the project settings you can go here time here is the fixed time step. It's 0.02. You can, of course, change this and so on and so forth. But this is the time interval used to call the fixed update. So it's called every 0.02 seconds. And late update is also called every second. So actually every frame, excuse me, not every second, but every frame. So in this scenario, basically the fixed update is called every three, four, five frames, approximately. This is my rough guess, not the precise formula and whatnot. So it's called every, you know, few frames. Update is called every frame. That's why if you're getting input, never do it in the fixed update. Always get the input in the update because it can happen that the fixed update is called every fourth frame and you press the button in the second frame, then you don't have that input. So anyways, the player movement, as we see here, the player walk, we are doing that over here in the fixed update. And then we want to follow the player. Why is why it is not a good idea to do it outside or basically inside of these two functions, but better yet to do it in the late update. Late update is called every frame. However, over late update is called every frame if the behavior is ample. Okay, so we still don't have an explanation. But basically, late update is called at the end of the frame. What does that mean? That means any calculation that is done in the update or fixed update, it is already calculated, it is already done, and we can have the result of that calculation inside of the late update. For example, if we have here float A, which is equal to 1, and B is equal to 3, and we have float C, and if I say over here C is equal to A plus B, by the end of the frame where this calculation happened, this calculation is already done. So it's already done. And over here in the late update, we can use that value. So this value C will be equal to A plus B, which is in the current scenario four. Which means if you are moving the player, the player's position is already calculated. The player has already moved to that position. We already know 100% that this position is calculated. It is there. It is valid. Player is, player is in that spot. And then we can follow the player. But if we use, and I'm not going to do that. Maybe in this game, we will not even see that effect, but in other games, definitely depending on the setup of your game. But if you use the camera to follow the player and you put that in the update or fixed update, it can happen that you see glitches. The camera is like glitching. It's not following the player correctly. It's like, you know, a little bit late and so on and so forth. Well, that happens because of the calculation. Maybe the camera first follows the player and then the player moves to the position and so on and so forth. So that is the reason why we are using the follow functionality inside of the late update. So make sure that you memorize this, bookmark this video, whatever. Thank you, teacher. Uh, I'm the best teacher in the world. Yeah, I know that. Thank you, you're the best student. <laughs> Anyways, let us just test this out before we wrap this video up. So if I hit the play button, we will notice now that the, you know, camera is following the player. Of course, if you don't like him to be over here, you can, you know, offset it a little bit more like this, depending on what you want. And then you can see that value and then you can use it. So there you go, voila. Now we saw that there was some kind of gap over here and actually look at that. Okay, we will actually need to raise the, let me just see this. Why is this happening? Oh no, no, this is part of the, I thought this right here was the gap. You see this? 
I thought it was a gap and this is the empty space. We don't see, but actually no. No, this is totally fine. This is okay. The background is there and yada, yada, yada. And there you go. So the camera is following the player. Again, as I said, maybe you don't like it like this. Maybe you want the camera to follow the player at 3.5, maybe even 4. So that is up to you. You can simply memorize that value, go back over here. Instead of minus 5, it can be minus 4. And there you go. If something is not clear when it comes to this, and by the way, over here, so we're simply storing the current position of the camera over here in the temporary position, and we're changing the X to be equal to the player's position X minus the offset. And we saw the effect right now. So if something is not clear, make sure that you ask in the comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.